Eight rappers that hip hop doesn't accept. Hip hop is a genre that puts a huge emphasis on skill and authenticity. For the most part, if an artist is talented and able to present themselves in a way that convinces the audience that they are real, they will be accepted by both fans and artists. As a result, the rap landscape has become an inclusive home to some of the most diverse personalities in music. From Mac Miller, Pitbull, Nav, and Lil Nas X, artists have repeatedly proven that people from any walk of life can hop into the game and find success if they create good music. Despite this, there are some rappers that are never able to truly fit in. Whether it's over image, music, or scandals, some artists find themselves shunned by almost all of their peers, missing out on features, award shows, and the validation of their art and abilities as a musician. In this video, we'll discuss eight rappers who have struggled to find acceptance in the hip-hop community. Before we begin, remember to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Number 8. Post Malone. Post Malone has defined a genre label since the beginning of his career. Even the single that put him on the map, White Aversion, cannot easily be classified as a straight up rap song, blending influences from multiple music genres. Despite this, it's hard to deny that Post makes music that sits most firmly inside the hip hop stratosphere, causing him to be labeled by most people as a rapper. Post himself has argued this, claiming to simply be a musician that makes whatever type of music appeals to him at the moment. It's comments like these that have put him at odds with many in the hip-hop community. Most famously, Post received backlash over an interview where he said, quote, if you're looking to think about life, don't listen to hip-hop. This did him no favors, receiving backlash from figures such as Lil B, Charlemagne the God, and Earl Sweatshirt. Many critics of Post believe that this comment confirmed prior accusations of cultural appropriation, that the rapper was getting rich off of hip-hop with little regard for its history. Despite this, Post Malone is still one of today's most successful artists, stealing the number one spot off Spotify's most streamed list in 2019. Number 7. Logic When Logic's career first began, his Young Sinatra mixtape series earned him critical acclaim and established him as a talented, technical rapper, which was reinforced by his release of his debut album, Under Pressure. However, as Logic's music progressed, he began to turn away from his introspective, autobiographical style and shift towards fast rap filled with surface-level bars, corny punchlines, and frequent references to his biracial heritage. As he became the target of an increasing amount of of memes about his racial identity and tone-deaf approach to the song 1-800-273-8255, Logic seemed to double down with increasingly braggadocio bars. Simultaneously, his output increased, causing fans to become frustrated by his seeming lack of effort or concern. His new release, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, received mixed to negative critical reviews, and despite solid commercial performance, received lukewarm reception by the hip-hop community, including a not-good rating from music critic Anthony Fantano. Could Logic be the first rapper to lean into a meme so hard that he ruined his own career? Number 6. Hobson Before the term clout chaser, there was Hobson. Wildly acknowledged as a skilled technical rapper, Hobson divided audiences. Some found his pull-no-punches attitude and demonic-like contact lenses edgy and exciting, while others wrote him off as a gimmicky Eminem wannabe. As Hobson's buzz began to grow, he unleashed a stream of disses towards mainstream rappers. In the span of just over a year, Hobson aimed attacks at Lil Wayne, Drake, Soulja Boy, Lupe Fiasco, Rick Ross, and Tyler the Creator. Many viewers saw these disses as transparent attempts to gain attention, which, to be fair, worked, at the cost of alienating him from mainstream hip-hop. Later, Hobson released a series of videos called The Ill Mind of Hobson. These videos would focus on Hop's perspective of certain moral issues and feature straight bars with few hooks. While the videos gained viral success, many within the hip-hop community found the videos to be preachy and self-righteous. Successfully alienated, Hobson continued to draw criticism for outdated beats, weak hooks, and a jaded attitude stemming from his perception that he enjoyed less success than he deserves. As of 2019, Hobson is on an indefinite hiatus to, quote, focus on his personal life. Number 5. Macklemore Macklemore had been making waves in the underground hip-hop scene well before he became pop rap's superstar with his 2012 album, The Heist. 
Seen as an introspective and woke rapper, Macklemore always existed around the fringe of mainstream hip-hop, creating records that oscillated from silly to deeply introspective with no warning. It was this level of self-awareness that exploded the heist into popularity. Lighthearted songs like Can't Hold Us and Thrift Shop sit next to Neon Cathedral, a song about relapsing into alcoholism. While some could argue that Macklemore was always closer to a pop star than a rapper, his win for Best Rap Album at the Grammys in 2014 quickly put the musician under a microscope. Having beat Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly and Beyonce's Formation, many believe that Macklemore had won unfairly, including him Himself. In a now famous post, Macklemore apologized to Kendrick over the win, saying he felt that he had robbed him. The entire event sparked an intense discussion about cultural appropriation. Had Macklemore won because he was white and therefore more relatable to the notorious whitewashed committee who chose Grammy winners? Regardless of the answer, it's obvious to see that the win affected his career. Macklemore has since released two following up albums, with no single gaining even remotely as much traction as any from the heist. Number 4. Lil Xan Self-labeled as a black sheep from the start of his career, Lil Xan rose to popularity in early 2017 as part of the SoundCloud rap scene. Lil Xan has been consistently criticized over many things for live-streaming over-the-top emotional outbursts, trying to capitalize off the death of both XXXTentacion and Mac Miller, and his flip-flopping perspective on drug use. However, perhaps the most severe backlash came from an interview in March of 2018, when Lil Xan dismissed Tupac's music as boring, and said he saw little value in the contributions of hip-hop pioneers. The comments led to massive backlash from the hip-hop community, with Waka Flocka Flame going as far as to label Xan, quote, banned from hip-hop. Since the controversy, Zan has delayed one album, announced another, and has distanced himself from music to focus on his sobriety. Number 3. Russ when Russ broke into the scene in 2016, he was quickly dismissed as making music for, quote, white girls at frat parties. Undeterred, he was able to build a loyal fan base relatively quickly, currently racking up 13 million monthly listeners on Spotify. However, his commercial success never transitioned into respect in the hip hop community. Russ quickly established himself as arrogant, dismissive, and aggressive. Russ has developed a reputation for his abrasive views on drugs, self centered comments in interviews, and sending hired goons to beat up anyone who he sees as an enemy. Victims have included Adam22, Smoke Perp, and most recently, Guapdad4000 at the Mala Luna Music Festival. This behavior has spawned the F Russ meme, and several large hip-hop stars have voiced dislike for the rapper and his music. This might explain why, despite his fame, he has so few features from established A-list artists. Number 2. Lil Yachty When Lil Yachty exploded into popularity in 2016, he became the poster child for a very specific subset of SoundCloud rap, dubbed Bubblegum Trap. Using samples from video games, cartoons, electronic music, and more, Bubblegum Trap consists of bright melodies, very few traditional rap bars, and a lighthearted attitude about often dark subjects. This immediately caught negative attention from old heads in the rap community. Personalities like Joe Budden, Ebro, and Pete Rock were quick to dismiss the rapper as soft and his music as trash. This sparked heavy debate on how the new generation of rappers were affecting the evolution of hip-hop. This was unfortunate for Yachty. Self-appointed as the king of the teens, and essentially labeled as the face of the new generation, Lil Boat became the whipping post for many older artists' frustrations about where rap was headed. Yachty even admitted in a May 2017 article with The Guardian that he felt unfairly targeted by the older generation. Since then, Yachty's output has been slower and less well-received. Do you feel like this is due to the backlash? Or has Yachty been riding a dying wave this whole time? Let me know. Number 1. 6 9 Just one year ago, no one would predict Takashi 6 9 would score the number one slot on this list. Famous for his abrasive online antics, flamboyant appearance, and aggressive music, Takashi's subversive attitude was taking the rap genre by storm. Enjoying critical and commercial success for his albums Day 69 and Dummy Boy, 6 9 was garnering international attention and collaborations with some of the hottest current rappers. Despite being a newcomer, Takashi was shaped up to be the most successful rapper of 2018. However, this quickly changed. 
After becoming increasingly associated with Nine Trey, a subset of the New York Blood Gang, Takashi found himself in the center of an investigation by the FBI, and was arrested in November of 2018. Told by the FBI that his life was in danger at the hands of Nine Trey, Takashi quickly flipped on the gang, and fully cooperated with the feds in exchange for increased possibility of a reduced sentence. His public testimony immediately exposed the truth that many suspected, that Takashi had essentially bought the support of Nine Trey, and had no real gang affiliation. This quickly earned Takashi a reputation as a snitch, drawing criticism of many fans, as well as well-respected rappers. Takashi is still serving his sentence, but could be released as this month. Do you think his career can recover? That's something that a lot of people have been wondering, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Will he even make an attempt at music again? Let me know if you think so in the comments section. And before you leave, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel.